So the first thing we need is to install Tortoise Git. So go to the Tortoise Git website, choose the latest stable release. We're going for 2.13.0 here, and then a choice of 64 or 32 bit windows. This is a 64 bit install. So we're going to get that one instead. And once that's downloaded, just run the standard Windows installer. For the most part, we can just use the default settings. So step through next and next, and let it do, uh, do its thing. Once that's finished, make sure you run the start wizard option because the wizard will set up most of the default uh, settings for Git for you. Until we get to here, because we don't have Git installed for Windows yet, we're, we're still doing the tortoise front end. So go to the Git for Windows website, download that. It takes a moment as well. and run the second installer. So we're part way through installing Tortoise Git. We've paused halfway through that and we've now run the second installer at the same time. Again here, for the most part, all the default settings will be fine. So just skip through next, each of the windows. You can always go back and make changes to these settings later so it doesn't particularly matter what choices you make. Okay, once you get through all of those, hit the install button and leave it to do its thing. So that takes some moment or two. Once it's finished doing all its cleanup scripts, the second installer, remember we're partway through installing Git, the second installer will finish. Uh, let's skip the release notes, finish that. And now we've gone back to the outer installer, the one we started a moment ago. If you click the check now button, it now recognizes that there is a copy of Git for Windows installed. And the last detail we need to fill in is a valid username and contact email, which is pretty much the only piece of information that Git needs in order to allow you to check things in. So we need to at least fill those two in. And next and finish. Now we've got Tortoise Git installed, we're ready to check something out. So uh, one setting that is worth making sure is the right way around under the git heading for the global settings for all uses of tortoise git is to make sure that you turn off carriage return line feed translation so that um, risk OS has different line endings to windows and we don't want them translating forwards and backwards each time we uh, work on something so i'm going to use um RiskOS opens GitLab as a example place to get something from. We're just going to use it read-only mode for now. Just check something out. If we pick the um, show scrap project, so other. Um, Git repositories online might look a little different to this. This is using GitLab. If we click on the clone button, we can get it to copy the address to the clipboard. Then if you right click Git clone, it will automatically paste that in, ready to check out. So 
So the next step is to share the folder so that RiskOS can see it from the Windows PC. So go across to Advanced Sharing, click on Share this folder. The share name will be the default for the directory. And make sure that Read Write permissions, so full change control, are turned on. Last dialog, make a note of the network path, so Windows laptop software in this example. Over on RiskOS, go to the OmniClient application and choose the LAN manager protocol. Give the share a name, it doesn't matter too much what the name is uh, used here. The server name and the directory path are what we remembered from the previous dialog over in Windows, so we need to put Windows laptop and software and your username and password are the username and password of your Windows user. Click connect and we'll now be able to see the contents of that folder shared and if we copy that just to the local disk to speed things up a bit now we can see all of the things that we've just checked out over on Windows and you'll see the RISC-OS file types have their correct icons. So the trick that makes that work is these comma and then three letters uh, after each of the file names. So comma FF9 corresponds to a sprite. Let's make a little edit, for example, to the run file. Just put an extra comment at the top. Save that. Obviously in practice you might be making slightly more extensive edits. Copy this over to the window share again. And if we go here, first thing we need to do is create a branch for our changes to live on. Again, give the branch name. The branch name is a little arbitrary make sure that the switch to new branch is turned on so that will create the branch and switch to it then if we do a commit it will commit to that new branch and show us the files that have changed if you double click on any of these files in the list it will run a comparison tool and you can see what changed in each of the respective files So we need to give it a commit message. So just state what we changed in these files. And click on commit. The last step then is to push these changes. So uh, this is a read write copy of that same project. If we click, click on clone, grab the URL again, we can go across to Tortoise and do a push. So our local branch name was run comments. So if we make the same name for the remote copy, get the URL and click OK. So this is now pushing our local changes from the run comment branch to the remote repository. So back in the remote repository, if we look at the list of known branches. That run comment branch has appeared in the list and at the top of it is the commit we just made. And if you go to the full history you can then browse each of the individual commits and see what changed in them. So just our one line change uh, visible there.